This is PCAF Texas Entrepreneur's Playbook. I'm Russ Capper, this week's guest host, and I'm here at the Gulf Coast Regional Family Forum. And my guest, Jonathan Crystal with Crystal and Company. Jonathan, welcome to the Playbook. Thank you, Russ, for having me. I appreciate it. You bet. So, uh, interesting conference going on here. I got to watch you up on the stage uh, conduct a real cool panel, I might add. Thank you. Uh, but it, I felt like you probably could have been on the panel as well as moderating it. So tell me about Crystal & Company. Sure, so Crystal & Company is a national insurance brokerage firm. It was founded by my grandfather, Frank, in 1933. So we're about to celebrate our 85th year. My goodness. Uh, and we don't celebrate anniversaries till we actually complete the year. That's good. Uh, we are, uh, as I said, a national firm. We're headquartered in New York with 11 offices across the country, including here in Houston. I have the great pleasure of working uh, not just with my father and my two brothers, but about 450 colleagues across wow. the country. And uh, we uh, serve and advise a, a wide variety of financial institutions, nonprofit organizations, and corporations, and addressing the kind of full needs of, of their uh, full scope of their insurance needs. Okay, uh, and that might also include uh, family-owned businesses. Yeah, we, we've developed quite of uh, expertise and specialty in working with families and business together. There's Part of, uh, part of our business is advising families and protecting themselves and their mm -hmm. personal assets. Mm -hmm. And the, the greatest part, portion of our business is addressing the corporate needs. But when you put the two together, uh, you've got an interesting opportunity to think more holistically about risk and, the, and what you can do to protect not just the family itself, but all of their assets and think about what it takes to perpetuate that, that strength and resilience of the family over time. Sure, so let me make sure I got this right. So you do, uh, obviously, family-owned businesses, their businesses, their personal work too, but you also do just commercial businesses, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It, so is there, is there a, I mean, do you have different people that call just on commercial people than family, or do you overlap? Because well, there's a difference, isn't there? It's a little bit more in terms of temperament and thinking about uh, style. I, I, we also work with a lot of uh, financial sponsors, private equity firms, oh. and sometimes the difference is really one in terms of time horizon. If you're a private equity firm and you're looking about three, five years out, how do we validate our investment thesis, and make sure we have a successful e exit? Well, then you're thinking about risk in a very specific way and what are the things that could actually impact your ability to realize your investment on the exit side. When working with families, the time horizon might be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, you might other, have other considerations in mind uh, in terms of thinking about the reputation, the name brand associated with the business. You're also thinking about how do you help those families uh, succeed over time if they're entering into a new geography, uh, maybe they're divesting a business or maybe they're investing in a new business. And if you really care about the families that are in business and really understand what makes them tick and where their values are, yeah. You can sort of think ahead and start to ask questions like, you know, I see you're thinking about making investments here. We're talking to you. Have you thought about these other risks that, that um, might come into play? And me as a third generation family member myself and getting to work with my brothers and my dad, I'm just fascinated uh, by the dynamics of the families and getting to see founders and un incredible entrepreneurs and them grappling with these questions of how to, to perpetuate their, their wealth and their expertise to the next generation. Um, seeing sons and daughters, cousins and aunts and uncles uh, all trying to work together and, and collaborate uh, for the success of the family and maybe sometimes uh, not so uh, carefully collaborate. Right, right. really interesting. Uh, do you sound though like you really like what you do too though? So. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, you know, it's, um, it, it's something particularly special and gratifying to be part of of uh, uh, really building on a legacy. My, right. I was very fortunate to have my grandfather start the company my dad really build it and take it where it is today. And I just look out ahead and, and see such tremendous opportunity for, uh, for our business and for our colleagues. I'm very fortunate to work among some of the most talented professionals in our industry. And uh, look, we're in the risk business. And I think we're in a risky world. Uh, we've got technological change going on. We've got all sorts of other factors that affect every single business. And if we can be a partner to them and help guide them and advise them through uh, kind of navigating these, these tricky, rocky waters, um, then I think we can sustain what's been the bedrock of our business, which is relationships and the relationships with the owners and the executives of the companies we work with. It's interesting to me that you brought up the risk taking place these days, of course, insurance company, but I mean, even the, the geopolitical risk these days is, is extremely high. Uh, the technology thing, the disruption that's happening too, I mean, it's, it's getting harder, it seems to me, to predict the future. 
Well, I'm not sure it's ever easy to predict right. the future, uh, but I think that we do live in a world where there's so many different moving pieces and understanding how they play into one another. If you're running a business, you're very focused on taking right. care of your clients, understanding where you can take it. And the insurance world is about the very, very unlikely things that could throw everything uh, out of whack. And so if we can give a little comfort to our clients and saying, hey, have you thought about, if you're in the product business, what your supply chain looks like and how a disruption in your supply chain may affect your overall business or, hey, uh, you're an investor and you've set up all these different entities and legal structures to be able to, to make investments, how might there be liability associated with all those investments? Um, and, and really kind of help your clients not just think about the things that they know, but anticipate the things they may not be thinking about. Well, so it's interesting you are so third generation where everything I know about family businesses, third generation is supposed to be where the greatest fallout happens, I think. Uh, and, and so, I mean, did you know that when you showed up? Well, I think when I, I walked in the door, uh, someone uh, reminded me or I, I familiarized me with the phrase shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves right. in three generations. Right. And, and I asked them whether is that destiny or is that a prediction? Right. Uh, I'm not sure I like either one, but at least I can pr prove the prediction wrong. Right. Uh, the reality is it is very, very difficult for families to be successful over generations. And there's a lot of statistics that bear that out. And so I've uh, framed that a little bit into how we think about our own business, how we can make it resilient, how we can succeed and uh, perpetuate our values over time, uh, both unifying our, our own family. And then also thinking about, um, from a risk standpoint, what are the reasons these families are, mm -hmm. aren't successful mm -hmm. over time? And, and the, the themes are pretty common. You might find them in the Bible, you might find them in Shakespeare. Right. Uh, they're kind of all uh, out there. And if we can bring some of that expertise to bear and say, hey, um, let's help you and, and take some of the experience we've learned. And, and we've certainly made our own mistakes along the way um, and, and, and incorporate that in our own advice in, to our clients. I'm curious about you know, the spectrum of your clients and customers, you know, from finance to, to nonprofits to family business. Certainly it wasn't like that when your grandfather started it, was it? Uh, absolutely not. My grandfather started as, as an insurance agent in, in Wall Street in the 1930s and was one among hundreds. Uh, but I think there's always been a continuity which is working with smart business owners and executives and helping them solve their business problems. And that understanding that when you're uh, side by side with your clients, helping them solve their problems, coming up with a creative solution, uh, you're not going to be just there as their insurance broker, but you're going to be there as their partner for the long term. Well, Jonathan, really, it's a cool story. I really appreciate you sharing it with us. Yeah, thank you so much, Russ. It's been a pleasure. You bet. And that wraps up my discussion with Jonathan Crystal. And this has been another Thought Reader production brought to you by PKF Texas, the Entrepreneur's Playbook.